Am I correct? Your first experience with George Duke was the record Feel. Is that correct? Yeah. Who's on that record? Is that Alfonso? No. Uh, it's John Hurd. The band is John Hurd on bass. Uh, and Hugo Chancellor on uh, drums. Uh, Frank Zappa is on the record as Abdul X. Claude Pyram is, vo- is on vocal for one song. Oh, right, yeah. And, and, and Erto is the percussionist on that record. And that record was recorded in 19, late 73, seven, released in 74, MPS Records. Um, and it is my favorite record in the world. If, I, I, I don't even want to I don't even want to begin to talk about like how my instrumental record is going to sound, but I'm going for that. I feel you, man. That's, I where, mean... that's where my that's where my head is. I'm going for that vibe. So when it finally comes out, expect don't expect me to do. I mean, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to completely jack George Duke and feel, but as far as vibe and as far as intent, I've never heard anything like it, and that's what I'm going for. Yeah. That record is what made me feel as if I had the strength and courage to go out in front of people and make music. Because on that record, there's so much intent. George Duke meant every thing that he said on that record musically was every note that he pressed on the Fender Road I felt every single one of them and I, and I have never heard a record that has done that to me since of all the records I've heard a lot of records I've owned a lot of records there's no record that does that to me on the, and still I'm 40 yeah. I heard that record when I was 9 Okay, so that's a long time to be listening to that record, to know that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's a powerful thing with a record, because I feel like for everyone, there's just kind of this specific vibe that can resonate with you and that's like i know that record a bit but i'm more familiar with records of his like uh like master of the game is one of my favorite records of all time um yeah. and yeah. uh yeah that's the epic era yeah <laughs> The uh, yeah. I mean that yeah. record had a big influence on me, but I feel very similar about uh records like like Herbie Hancock's Secrets or oh yeah, uh, yeah. Wayne yeah. Shorter's uh Native Dancer like those are like records in the same yeah. way that are yeah. like did that's, strike the perfect the chord for me, you know. Um, but that is definitely the era. Sure. Um, now what's the story behind that? that message from George at the end of the record? Like, where did, where did you get that from? Um, and, you know, I got that from, I used to do, a, I used to do a radio show in Orono, Maine. I used to live in Maine. And I lived, and I, and I had a radio show on WMEB 91.9. And I was fortunate enough to inter- interview George. And that's where that came from. I still had the audio from it. And... A friend of mine told me, was like, yo, why don't you put that on the, the end of your record? Yeah. Because I was going to put it on another record that I'm working on, which is a George Duke tribute EP. Was me doing all my favorite George Duke songs, getting it out of my system. So but, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, man. Um, that, yeah, I can't wait to hear. It's so cool to hear that you did uh, radio. I mean, I kind of figured it might have been an interview you did, but I, I just really wasn't sure from the recording. But the fact that you got to interview yeah, him it was, is... it, was, it was an interview, and I was even playing tracks from Feel behind our interview. I used to have the whole thing, and I really wish, I, I really wish to God I could find it. But I found this little bit that I had cut up, and that I had done, and I originally wanted to put out and I just barely found that so that's why I put it on a record so that I don't ever have to go looking for it again 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if it gets lost, if, it, if the file itself gets lost, it's out on a record. Like, you'll always be able to hear it on a record. Yeah. Now, you know, was... Final, opinion. How did you, uh, how did you, like, first get into doing radio and doing interviews? Like, was that far into it for you? Had you been doing it for a few years? No, I wasn't even... A, I didn't even go to the school. <laughs> like, they needed somebody... They needed somebody to go to, they needed somebody to fill out the spot. And at the time, I was playing in a band and I was always on the campus. And we were always in the building rehearsing that the, that the, that the radio station was. And then the people who used to come to see us play, they would always come up to me and I would, you know, I, mean, I just out of relationships that I built, I ended up in the radio thing and they were like bro all you gotta do is take this one little class you don't have to be a member of the thing just a volu- as, as a volunteer DJ and I had shows that I would go on and it'd be I think I was on Saturday I remember oh man I remember when I used to do late night I used to I used to woo <laughs> them used to be the nights because we used to because I would invite friends and they had to be quiet but we'd be in there drinking and doing all kinds of shit. And then, uh, but then we would, then I had shows that were um, like noon to three. Those were cool, you know. Yeah. Um, I think I interviewed George on one of them noon to three shows because I don't think he was up late that night or, them, or the, around that time. Um, but yeah, I used to do radio. That shit was fun. I wish I could do it again. Yeah, man. I just don't have the time. I don't have the time, like, I, you know, I can't settle on a time because if I get a gig, then I need to go and do something that pay me because I need some money, you know? We've, I've been off for two years. Yeah, I feel you, man. It's it's hard to juggle sometimes. I, you know, I'm a full-time bass player, so this radio stuff is... Uh not always easy to get in there but it's again it's super cool to hear that you did it because it is like its own little art form i mean do you feel like how, how did you feel about the interview process do you do you have any like particular tricks or things you like that you particularly felt like you had trouble with nerd talking to my hero <laughs> that's all it was i was a nerd talking to my hero and i asked him all the questions that i ever wanted to ask him my whole life i'm like okay here's your chance here he is yeah. To answer your question, you got an hour. Go, and I did, and it was the best interview ever. And he knew I was a fucking herb, and that's why I put the part on the record that I did because he was like, despite the fact that you love me and love what I do and love what I play, I'm a fucking. Obviously, you just even said this for yourself. I can. Compl- I'm a complete. It's evident that I was George Duke ripoff, <laughs> and I love it. There's nobody that, because because to me there's no one more honest in their musical playing than George Duke. Nobody, you know, and you can even hear it yourself. And if there's gonna be one person that I'm gonna rip off and learn something of myself from, because that's the key. He said, despite the fact that you love what I do and love what I play, somewhere in that you have to find your own voice. Yeah. Your own sound. And you can do that. And he's so fucking right. And when he told me that, it changed my life. You know why? Because I will never be able to, I will never in my life, as much as I practice, be able to play the way that George did play. I can get there a little bit. I can, I can fool, you know, I can fake it until I make it. I can definitely, I know a couple of tricks that I have up my sleeve that I could do that. But in reality, I will never be able to do what George Duke could do. But here's the beautiful part about that. George Duke will never be able to do what I can do because we are two completely different entities, different expressions of of the creator, of God. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He made it that And that's why it's so beautiful. If I could do what George Duke could do, what the f*** is the point? <laughs> Yeah. So what, how how am I inspired by that? Oh, I can do that too. You know what I'm saying? What's the point? So find the thing that you love that I do and take that around the next stars when he told me. That was some dope shit, man. I'll never forget how I felt when he told me that. I was like, 
I was def- I was definitely like a child who uh, I was a kid. Well, see, I was about to use another reference that you probably too young for, <laughs> but um, I was definitely the kid who got to shake Jordan's hand, and imagine how that might have felt. Yeah, that that was me when he told me that. Like I never felt so proud of him in my life. Yeah, man. You know. It's yeah. It's, I never had a moment that I can that I can think of. The one moment, somebody asked me like, "What like name 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 like your top five moments of like your life?" And I have played everywhere I wanted to play. I've met all the people I wanted to meet. You know, and there's only one moment I can think of aside from the birth of my children and that was the day that I talked to George Duke and he told me that I could be as dope as he is <laughs> if I wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. That was the greatest thing ever and there's nothing doper in life than that. Yeah, that's like one of the and best hero, affirmations you can get. There's Superman telling you, hey, you can fly too, you know? Yeah, man. I, f- I feel very similarly like uh, Paul Jackson. Paul Jackson is my favorite bassist of all time, and I wish I could have gotten to speak to him before he died. But just like just the way he plays, like the truth behind what he's doing and how it like it resonates with me, it makes me like I would feel the Paul same Jackson way. Can play. You can tell he's somebody that is not playing with you. <laughs> I love Paul Jackson. He's the greatest. Yeah, man. That's why I love him it's because of the intent in which he plays. You don't play. He's out there playing. Yeah, um, I mean, I've yeah, I've had. Yeah, he's playing. He's not here to play though. Yeah, I, like he would have been my dream interview if I had gotten to do that. I would have been so starstruck. I mean, in in like, spe- I guess specifically for the bass playing world, I have other, I have a few other dream sort of interview people, but uh, um, he, you know, he's he's like up there. I mean, I've gotten to interview like Mike Clark, who if Thrust is like my second favorite Herbie album, and it's like. Right, like yeah. those rhythm sections are some of my like favorite groupings of musicians. Um, but anyways, back I I want to pull it back to some different George Duke stuff that I want to talk about. Like, are you are you very familiar with his work with Zappa? Yes. Um. Now, like, where 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 did you find out about Zappa, and and like what what drew you into him, and what uh what you know, about George's work with them up, you appreciate. I, the first music I grew up listening to was Fusion, Return to Forever. It was the first band I ever really started listening to. I found out that George Duke played with Frank Zappa shortly after finding Steel, which was about, I don't know, maybe Zappa was in my teens, I guess. And I, that's, 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 that's where it started. And I was always really into progressive music. Music that went left when everything else went right. So, and then I found out that George played, and I found everything that George played on it. And, and the thing I love about it is, in that period, there's an innocence of George. You know, George. It's it's not the mess of the game, George. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's a George trying to find some different, yeah, trying to find something to play. You know, something that he could be himself. And that's why I really enjoy that period. And that period it also comes from George and the Cannonball Adderley era. Yeah. Because before he played with Zappa, who did he play with? Cannonball Adderley. Yep, Phoenix. I love that record. Yeah, Phoenix, Music Jaw, Black Messiah. Hey, hold on a second. Hey! <laughs> I'm on an interview. Let me hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, Zappa. So yeah, I like progressive music, and he played with him, and I found out, and like, of course, got all I could get with him on it. Roxy elsewhere, obviously. And oh yeah. Yeah, we got a lot. Yeah, Roxy and Elsewhere might be my favorite with George Duke. Actually, you know what? My favorite's probably... Uh, have you ever seen that live show? There's, like, different iterations of it. The one I had, my older brother had a DVD when I was in high school of uh, the Dub Room special. And they have, like, uh, that yep. whole... Claymation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the Claymation. Um, yep. And, like, Napoleon Murphy Brock. 
Chester Thompson, Ruth Underwood. Yeah. Um, and man, that was one of my favorite records. Listen to those George Duke and Napoleon Murphy Brock solos on there. That's like how I learned to improvise, playing like cosmic debris yep. with those with those videos. Um, is there like a particular, I, I guess like maybe from Roxy and elsewhere or somewhere else, like a particular favorite, like George Duke solo from that era or. There's a solo on it's on this, on YouTube where he's playing a funk version of the Inca road solo from Richmond, Virginia in like 74, 73, something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure where it is. I haven't heard it in a while. Okay. But that's the one I, if, if I'm ever down a rabbit hole, that's the one I'm usually looking for. Okay, I love that original, the the studio version of Inca Rhodes, the solo he does on there. It's so, like, blazing yeah. and cool. I, I love that original version. Um, and uh, Yeah, I love it too, but there's, that, this, but there's variety. Which oh, I guess is, well, his, live, his well, live performances, I feel like, were his best work. I mean, he's got, like, a really cool sound studio-wise, but I feel like his bands are just yeah. meant for live performances. The bootlegs are some of the best yeah, stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Do you have a particular favorite song that George sings for him? Um, I, I not really. I mean, St. Al, St. Alfonso. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, St. Alfonso's pancake breakfast at the end. I like, I, I like hearing George in any capacity I can hear him. Yeah. It's, whether he's singing, whether he's not singing, he was farting. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, man. Especially if I haven't heard him. 